hello and welcome uh, uh, to geographic information system uh, uh, we'll uh, in this module as i said uh, we would look at basic operations which uh, taking off from the module 5 i did explain some of the operations and uh, my uh, uh, ta of prakash did explain some very basic things about qgis but now i would take it forward explain each and every aspects of how do you actually edit what are the different errors that may occur how do you correct those errors and what are the different uh, things that you have to look at when you are looking at the edit tool basically. So, why I am very specific about the edit tool is that when you start looking at your uh, start your data, you will be able to uh, you will be looking at each and every aspect of the editing of a vector layer because any incorrect attribute can in, incorrect geometry can lead to lot of issues uh, when you are looking at the entire GIS data. So, this editing of this attribute is extremely important. So, we will look at uh, editing of this geometry is extremely important. So, look we will look at each and every aspect of why and how this is important and why and it is necessary and how do we do it ok. So, that is this is more of a practice class. So, in case uh, if you guys are uh, having a uh, system in fr front of you or if you are looking at it in a system rather than your mobile phones. So, you, you can uh, parallelly lo start looking at it. So, I would suggest you start looking at it. So, it would be very useful in uh, understanding the concepts that uh, I have thought till now. Okay. So, in today's class we will look at uh, basic editing of the data that is acquired procedures in integrated data analysis I have done many of those, but I will uh, again take it forward. Uh, so, introduction to editing creating in any creating any vector layers in any GIS software tools in a GIS software some of the different tools we have already discussed some, but some of the other tools that are required I will uh, take it forward. Ok. So, before we start very important thing that we have to look at is how do we maintain a logical consistency in uh, creating a vector database or any of the data models. Very important thing that you have to uh, uh, think ok you can uh, you can go to the field collect all the data extremely accurate etc and get it here put it in the database etc that is fine fair enough. But when you are looking at the database your, your database has to have certain logical consistency without logical consistency your data or your database may not really sound uh, existing in the real world. Because whenever you are actually creating uh, a data model, it is actually to mimic the real world. If you are, if you are, if you do not have a logical consistency in your database, then data model, then your data model is not equivalent to a real world and the very purpose of using a GIS system to represent a real world fails. Okay. So, the logical consistency is extremely important in terms of uh, how the data model, how well a data model can explain the real world features. So, data model is measured for basic editing through various measures that is if there are errors, if there are editing issues that come across whenever you are having a data model that is the first thing that we will look at. The most important errors that we look at is two, one is the common vertex line ends and the corner have the same vertex ok, ends of a line and a corner of a line or a point that is ending the corner of a line have the same vertex or not. If it is dangling then you will have uh, that is an error ok. So, then you have a boundary adjacent polygons are overlapping, but share the uh, but do they share the same boundary. So, even if they are overlapping, so they should have the same boundary instead of two different uh, polygons overlapping something like this. You have two polygons and you will, it will be something like this. Instead it should be something on one or another or have a single boundary or not even one or another ok. A very good example was again by uh, Professor Price when you look at it uh, avoiding dangle let us say that you have a road that is uh, represented by this line segment these are two intersections and there is another uh, road which was supposed to be here. Uh, where this is an intersection here is misrepresented here. This is one of the errors that you find it in your data. So, that logical consistency should be there. So, the first thing is go to the edit mode and correct this error. This particular point has to be brought into this particular point. That is you will correct the topology, the horizontal line intersects the vertical one creating three different lines. 
so you will have four intersections one two three four then okay so once you put in the data all geometry first look at data detailly without looking at data without looking at these errors you will not be able to correct any data that is there uh, or any information that is put out you cannot certify that is correct okay in order to look at validated data first thing is correct the errors in the database look at the logical consistency in the database such errors has to be removed okay then there is something called a snap tolerance when i say snapping it means that minimum distance between the vertex at which they are considered to be identical okay uh, so when you are looking at this there is a particular uh, line segment a and there is a particular line segment b okay so you have the same node here which means that these two are actually uh, closer. So that means that when for a, for example, when you are looking at snap, it means to say that when you are drawing this particular line, digitizing this line, when you use snap, it correctly sits on this line instead of sitting it somewhere. If you are digitizing, you may even stop your line till here. Okay. Some, uh, I mean, you, are, you may stop your line till this point. See, if, if this is your original line that you have already digitized, if there is one original line like this, okay now you are digitizing another road which is actually supposed to join here you may stop here right so instead if you use snap what it does is it looks at minimum tolerance and it will locate whether these both are same points if it's same point it will snap to this point making it the same uh, common intersection that is what is called snap tolerance snap tolerance is normally looking at the which are the things that are identical okay so that that's also the work of the snap tool we'll see that in the further slides so and the other problem as i said is adjacent polygons so if you see here this is one polygon okay if we look at this polygon this is one polygon now there is another if if i draw the same polygon i have one polygon like this now there is another polygon which is representing the other land so what uh, normally when we digitize happens is something like this okay this cannot be something like this let me erase this let me do it in different form so this is one polygon let me take a different color so if the same polygon follows the same structure okay fine so these are two different polygons representing two different quantities on the earth surface but having the same boundary now because of your digitization maybe various things various issues uh, you may have both of them in the different uh, maps or different uh, reference things so you get this like this but they should have a common line here okay common boundary that is one of the issues when you are looking at logical consistency which has to be corrected we will look at this also how to be corrected in our further slides okay so the first let me introduce you to the editor toolbar and now from now onwards I will stick on to uh, QGIS I am not going it with any other software because QGIS is easily accessible to many those who do not have any GIS software can easily download QGIS whereas other uh, proprietary software if you guys have an access to it your institution provides an access many of the software also has student access for certain time you can always download it. But uh, if you guys, uh, if you uh, guys do not have an access to the full version, the proprietary version, I would suggest uh, you to download a free and open source software like QGIS. But most of these menus remain same, so you don't need to worry. Most of the representation also is same, uh, and uh, always uh, it it would remain same. Okay, so when you look at this is the editor toolbar okay when you and these are some of the tools that i've added by myself for uh, my analysis so uh, don't worry much about this. this is a google earth tool and this is a uh, the map uh, map tool that is your open street map tool to uh, access the open street maps and you can uh, uh, i mean uh, open street map is a wealth of data that is already there so you can even extract all the entire set of data that is already there on OpenStreetMap and utilize it for your analysis. So when you look at the editor toolbar, they, it has uh, different sections. For example, the first section here where you can see a single yellow pencil. Okay, So that is nothing but a toggle editing. If it is off, unclicked, then it means you are 
data, whatever your data is there, you cannot edit it. You cannot do any changes for that, uh, even if there is error in its boundary, its line, or there is a point that is uh, the extra point that you have added. But if you click on it and it is an edit mode, you can use it to edit your polygon features. Okay. Then you have sketching tools. Now, these are the tools which are used uh, to for certain issues. For example, this is a move poly, uh, move uh, feature that uh, is being used. I, I have not mentioned it here. It is a move feature and there are different sketching features. There is a add feature here. Uh, then you have save. Once you have uh, edited it, you can even save. Then you have cut and delete features. You can cut a, a particular feature and make it if there is a line and you want to represent those lines in different ways. So, you can cut that feature and make it a two feature. So, this is cut and this is delete in case you want to delete a particular feature, maybe an error that has occurred. So, you can cut it and delete that part. Copy paste uh, also is there as normal. Then you have labels to, to label that particular feature, particular, particular vector. You can label it as, uh, as necessary and as uh, supposedly you need. Okay, then you have a meta search. So this is very good thing in your uh, uh, most of the JS software. So you can understand what uh, what do you mean by that particular layer? What are the information about that layer? Then the most important part is Python. So most of the software has access to Python programming. So uh, uh, once you have this, you can start uh, coding your. You have your Python either in any of the environments that uh, can be installed. So once you have installed, you can start even uh, looking at all of the take just modules and use it for your analysis the way you need. So that is about the editor toolbar. Okay. So then as I said, snapping. Snapping is uh, uh, extremely important, uh, but in QGIS, snapping does not come as it is. Uh, if you look at ArcGIS, snapping is just a drop down uh, menu maybe from your uh, the, where the editing is there, you can just start snapping from there itself. But in when you look at QGIS, you have to enable it via settings, option, digitizing and enable snapping. So once you have enabled snapping, you get a, a menu uh, in here just below your, uh, in your QGIS window or editing window, digitizing window. Okay. So if someone asked me why do you sna sna need snapping, I have already previously explained in case a part of a line segment has already been created okay where i know the what is the starting point and ending point and has been created snap ensures the new digitized line which you are actually digitizing when snapping is turned on your pointer will snap to edges or vertex near it so it will just go and set it instead of sitting at centimeters away or uh, based on the units measurement away from that particular point. So, it will snap to that point. So, which means it is it will give you an extremely accurate snapping can be done to a vertex, can be done to a segment, can be done to both vertex and segment the way you need. Okay. So, that is how uh, snapping works. Then uh, uh, the saving part. Saving part is how do you save a digitized layer? You can save a selected layer. You can even roll back in case there are some errors. Uh, you can um, uh, for all layers you can save if you have multiple layers you are trying to edit in the same uh, overlaying all the layers you want to correct some of the issues that may have occurred. So, you can do it and save all layers together or save a particular layer only and that is how you can save a digitized layer. Okay. Uh, then is the feature editing see for example, I have created a feature this is one of the administrative boundaries that I have uh, extracted from an uh, uh, Google Earth map. So, uh, uh, it can be created manually or can have multiple templates. For example, feature editing, it is a polygon editing. This is a, a point editing that I have. So, there is two things. When you click here and say you want to do a, uh, uh, the feature is polygon, uh, add feature is polygon, then the polygon editing will come up. If it is uh, add feature is uh, point, then your, the point editing will come up. So, this is about the feature editing. So, once you have turned this on, it means it will give you all the word, uh, values that you can edit. Okay, This is about the feature editing. Okay, So, you can have multiple templates, you can add, you can change all of these issues. If there are errors, correct these errors. Okay, There is another tool called as node tool. This will be very useful in terms 
for you to uh, correct whatever the errors that may have happened in your uh, when you are digitizing for example this is your uh, node okay please be very uh, uh, i mean when you look at this particular node look at this part okay when i look at it see this this particular node i have missed one node in between this node which has to be a and the segment has to be something like this so now double once you have activated this particular node okay this uh, node tool here so now what you will do is that you will double click on this node okay once the node is activated you can click here and then come back here okay that's what i have done here fine so what it does it creates another node here and brings the line segment to that point that uh, that is why the node tool has been uh, is used so that you can add nodes delete nodes and create whatever if there is error you can correct those errors in your uh, digitized layers okay so and then the move a feature this is also extremely good fee, uh, aspect in terms of any of the js software for example this is one, one of the features that you have okay and for example if this feature by mistake when you are digitizing may have sat uh, across in your uh, database something like this okay connecting this particular vertex here so what you will do with this move feature you will click on this vertex and you will move this particular feature here wherever it is supposed to be that is why you use a move feature aspect in uh, any of the js software then you have delete feature you can delete a feature for example if uh, as i said i want to digitize it uh, newly i don't want to move it or put it in an accurate position so i want to delete it or if there is some error i want to delete it uh, so i uh, i just click i just click on this feature and it will show which are the vertex has to be deleted and from that vertex this feature can be deleted okay the next thing is attributes so how do you open an attributes for example i have all these layers here okay if you are uh, if you are able to see this these are the uh, this first layer second layer this is a third layer this is a polygon layer and this is a line layer and this is a point layer oh uh, yes yeah so uh, when we have these layers if you want to look at this just right click on this and uh, you can see open attribute most of the gs software have the same way right click on that and you can see open attribute table okay once you have opened the attribute table it looks something like this okay this is an attribute table so if you look at it it says uh, that i have i have uh, imported it from a osm map so you have a uh, osm id osn type is a way it admin level is one boundary is administrative boundary it's a government office a uh, name is butch collectors and barrier is wall these are the attribute information that is there okay now uh, for example if it had certain uh, uh, i mean uh, it, it also has i don't know it's not showing it here it also has x and y location okay uh, maybe i have uh, not completed the entire uh, attribute table so if i have completed the entire attribute table it is x and y location so you can even calculate what is the area of this particular uh, attribute okay so ju just by using different operations here so this is how the attribute table can be accessed so now if if in this attribute table if i want to let's say if i want to uh, edit this attribute table you have to click on this so it gives you edit editing of attribute table so you can add delete uh, any row or any uh, columns you can add or uh, correct any uh, data that is not uh, that is incorrectly saved and uh, do such operations once you have toggled edited it so you should be extremely careful then you have save editing where once you have edited it if you in case you want to save it so you can toggle it so it saves whatever editing that has been done uh, in the last uh, few uh, hours or minutes so this is add or delete features it means to say that it is if you want to add a feature in this context so you can add it there is uh, select and deselect features that is there here okay there is pan copy and paste this is for panning the for the entire database this is copying and this is pasting features okay the next tool that we are looking at is here is a uh, new field and uh, field calculator when i am looking at this new field and new field calculator for example you have a lot of attributes in your uh, entire uh, 
uh, sheet, let us say, entire database. Now, with those attributes, if you want to compute certain things or compute certain issues or compute certain outputs, so you can add a new attribute, a new field. Okay, for example, let's say that I have a I have five or six polygon features. With these polygon features, I want to calculate the area of a polygon. Okay, so I'll add a new uh, column that is called area. With that uh, column, I'll start with with a, uh, another field calculator. I'll calculate the area. It is just like this dollar area, like you do in your uh, Excel sheet. So it uh, it basically calculates the area of this polygon. Only thing is that it can calculate the geometrical shape of uh, based on the geometrical shape it can calculate the value. So using that geometrical shape, it will provide me the area of that entire column. So all the five uh, with just one stroke. So that is why you need a new field and a new field uh, calculator uh, in this attribute operation. So this gives you the entire uh, attribute data editing in your uh, database. So in case you want to edit your data, most of the operations on any of the databases is through attribute data editing. So this is extremely important in terms of you understanding and most importantly, I would suggest if in case you have already installed QGIS, please go through this field calculator. Field calculator is extremely very good tool for any kind of analysis that you want to make in uh, the GIS platform. So it can provide you a lot of inputs and lot of uh, extensive report reporting and field data computations. Okay. The next thing is using uh, QGIS as a processing toolbox. So now nowadays it is, uh, 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 I mean, it uh, the R as a statistical software and also an image processing toolbox has actually come up in a very larger context. R has extreme uh, 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 computational capability in terms of uh, analyzing, in terms of statistical uh, analysis and also now in geometric analysis as uh, over a period of time. Now in last two, three years, there has been huge number of research papers which is employing uh, statistical, statistical software R as in both statistical and also as image processing uh, package. So when you want to, uh, in case you want to integrate R with QGS, we have to form much more extensive a strong tool in terms of statistics and in terms of image processing capability. So you can also enable R in uh, in this uh, particular package. So uh, if you just go into processing options in your QGIS, so you can click on that uh, as R script and you can activate it. Once you have activated it, you can even use a 64 bit version in case your Windows is a 64 bit or your Unix or Linux is in a 64 bit version. So click on this so that R is uh, linked. Once the R is linked, you have uh, the entire toolbox of R that will come into your uh, QGIS. Once this is done, any kind of statistical analysis can be done and even the scripting in R can be done using uh, this uh, particular package. Now, now with the newer version, you also have WX Python and R integrated. So with this, uh, the entire package of extensive good uh, GIS software has been uh, quite easily available in, in case you guys are looking at it. Okay, so R scripts and GIS integration, R scripts is uh, processing spatial data processing framework for QGIS plugin. That's for R scripts needs to be enabled in the processing menu bar provide uh, bar uh, providers menu. After R is enabled, uh, you can run the scripts from the processing toolbox as I have shown here. Okay. Now there is another uh, feature of integrating the spatial database that is through spatial light. So again, this can be enabled uh, in uh, you. You can search it as a plugin and enable the spatial light uh, feature. Spatial light is a spatial database management system on SQLite. Okay, it is extremely lightweight and portable. Okay, raster tools include raster light. So you have both vector processing tools and a raster processing tools. If you look at it, it is. Uh, when you look at it, you have uh, all of the tools that uh, the spatial light can handle starting from geometry to the vector layers to spatial indexing and also spatial index and also uh, to your raster indexing. So all of these can run and it can handle uh, SQL in a extremely efficient way, SQL queries. Then you have a uh, post GIS, which is the norm of the day. 
most of the special databases run on PostGIS today. And when you are looking at this, QGIS is quite very efficient in handling PostGIS uh, as a special, da a special database. And PostGIS database management can handle the entire database management of uh, the QGIS. PostGIS is a GIS based extension for PostGRESQL. Okay, uh, PostgreSQL add uh, support for geographic objects to PostGRESQL, Post which means that PostGIS is one which gives you the geometric aspects or the geographical aspects to uh, the main uh, database system. Okay, that has nothing but PostGRESQL. Enables PostGRESQL server to be used as a, as a backend server special database for GIS. Okay, so yeah, without post, uh, post GIS, it is not possible to use post GIS only for your uh, as a GIS tool, but uh, as, as a GIS uh, database, but it has to be connected to post GIS so that post GIS provides the geometric output or the geographical nature, whereas uh, post uh, GIS SQL provides you the database. So, special operations analysis simply mean running an SQL query in the database. So, that, that is through the SQL operation itself. When you look at the entire PostGIS uh, functions, you have uh, functions that is starting from an, uh, any of those functions and covered by within and maximum distance longest line. So, all of these are PostGIS functions that you can see. So, if you just open your the functions tab in PostGIS, if you go into PostGIS and see the open, uh, look at the open tab, you can look at all of these functions. Then the next thing is PG admin. This is a GUI base for database administration tool. So uh, when, when you are looking at uh, previous versions of QGIS, maybe uh, even before 1.80, so you, most of them uh, were uh, in terms of coding. So but uh, now we have a GUIS base for database uh, administration. So uh, if you look at this, this is a PG admin uh, tool where you can see this is why I, uh, I uh, th this was one from uh, uh, this has been adapted from Terra GIS. So this uh, particular screen, if you look at it, there are three different uh, servers that are uh, running. That is Snuggle, there is Terra GIS, and other server. So out of which a particular Terra GIS server is uh, is running at a database which has a GIS data map vendor. Then you have uh, certain schemas and replication, and you have four GIS running. Okay, so uh, when you look at this, uh, what are the data that are public are, it has conversions, it has functions, it has trigger functions. So these are uh, different uh, public, so you can make it public, it can be made as private. So that's based on the owner, it, you can, it gives you the entire uh, description of what it basically is, whether it, uh, whether it has been inherited as a table or it inherits any table from any other uh, 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 any of any other uh, this one uh, what is a primary key in this particular uh, table and it gives you the entire property in case you are uh, looking at uh, how it has to be done how it has to be coded this how it is coded then you have statistics depends and referenced by so all of these are uh, with the P, uh, pg admin so uh, one who wants to look at administration of the database as a tool so pg admin can be very useful in terms of administration so again, uh, this was one of the things that was also explained by Terra GIS that is a QGIS and Python interface. Uh, Python is growing as an extensively a very good uh, uh, coding uh, uh, tool. So now uh, QGIS also has come up with a Python console wherein which can handle effectively most of the Python packages and commands. So when you look at uh, this, there are three options. One is the Python console, which is shown here. So you just on typing the commands and extracting the tools. Then you have processing toolbox. This is the entire toolbox. You have uh, uh, refer uh, refer to toolbox. That's for image analysis. That is for geo algorithms. Then you have GrassGIS. GrassGIS is extensively very good software for raster analysis. In fact, I would say that it is GrassGIS is one of the best software for raster uh, raster analysis as QGIS is for the vector analysis. Okay, and you have uh, entire package of GDAL. GDAL, see, when you look at the difference, basic, very basic difference right, between an open source software and a close uh, and uh, uh, the software that is licensed or uh, proprietary. In the very basic, both of them run on most of the GS software run on GDAL or OGR. GDAL is a raster processing package, and OGR is a vector processing package. When you look at this, 
uh, uh, these two uh, packages, the way uh, this uh, uh, the proprietary software is that they they define different tools or they build different tools for usages and data and you have a very intuitive and very nice GUI uh, which is present in this particular uh, process, uh, I mean, uh, interfaces. Otherwise, uh, uh, I, I don't see much difference from an open source QGIS software within ArcGIS engine. Though, though they have a lot of services, they have a backend support, though uh, uh, which is much uh, faster and much uh, easier. So, that's all is the difference in ArcGIS and QGIS. But uh, when you look at it, the same toolboxes can be accessed with this uh, uh, using Python console. Then you have so you can connect it to Saga. Saga also has a huge collection of algorithms and you can connect it to R scripts, etc. So these are different uh, things that you can explore when uh, in case you want to be an advanced GIS user using QGIS. So then you have uh, tools such as WinPython and Plugin Builder. Plugin Builder is one uh, such tool wherein you can start uh, building uh, plugins for a particular applications. So, uh, in summary, we looked at what is logical consistency mean, how do you may have to maintain a logical consistency, then procedures in integrated data analysis, we looked at what are different procedures, how do we uh, look at uh, procedural uh, inputs to uh, GIS, then uh, basic operations in QGIS, how we will do it, then you, we looked at SQLite, we, uh, PostGIS, uh, then PJ admin, etc. So, finally, we ended it with uh, PostGIS and PJ admin. So, these are different aspects, and also I would uh, like I would like students to explore with Python console and R as an input to uh, GIS. Uh, once we start the lab, so uh, probably you, uh, once we show you the basic of how QGIS works, probably you can start learning by yourself how. Uh, uh, you can attach Python and R and make it a powerful tool in terms of applications for your varied applications that you may have. Until so, until next class, uh, I will meet you in the next class with advanced analysis, advanced uh, data modeling analysis. So that's uh, that would be the uh, probably the last class of uh, theory that I would uh, take up. The last module of theory. The rest would be more on practicals and. Finally, it would end, the course would uh, end uh, with uh, more of what what do you mean by interpol? I mean uh, the various standards. How are standards maintained? And is there any standards that we have to uh, maintain when you are creating data and sharing data? So we would end the course with that. But uh, in the next class, I would take up the advanced tools or uh, advanced modeling to advanced tools or special analysis tools in uh, GIS. Okay. Uh, so until then. Have a nice time. Thank you very much.